Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. And today, the presentation is Got Clutter, We're Gonna Get Organized. And I'm gonna just share with you just some simple strategies that you can use throughout your home to get organized. They're gonna be really simple. But of course, I'm gonna also provide you just with some things in regards to why we have so much clutter, some statistics, some reasons why we hold on to things. And of course, I'm gonna give you some strategies on just how to work through your own projects and your homes and your lives, as well as some things you can possibly get rid of today when you go home. But before I start with all of that information, I just want to share with you a little bit about my story because sometimes when people look at an organizer, they think, oh my goodness, her life is just so organized and everything is in order. But I'm gonna share with you some of the good and some of the bad of my life. So, of course, yes, I have been organized all of my life. And of course, when I was working and people needed to find things like the scissors, the stapler, pens, pencils, they always came to me. But I realized a lot of the things, good and bad, that I learned about organizing, I picked up from my mother. Now, every Tuesday, she would stand in front of the refrigerator and she would clean it out because Wednesday was trash day and therefore she wanted to get rid of things that were had expired. And then of course, when she shopped, she would always break her packages of meat down, wrap them up, and she even went a step further. She labeled and dated things and put it in the freezer. Janet doesn't do that. But one of the things that I did pick up from my mother, she was a saver, and I became a saver. So whenever there was a margarine container that would come into the house, of course, you had to save it because you couldn't put that out, throw that out because you could use it for something, maybe a thousand and one things. But I had to learn as an adult not to become a saver. So, and I also wanted to share with you because a lot of times you hold on to things because they mean a lot to you. So, these are a couple of things that you can see by the dates. These were my toys and I just recently got rid of them. Now the first one, of course, is my dollhouse, and I had this wonderful plan. You know, I love my dollhouse. When I became an adult, I was gonna get married, I was gonna give it to my daughter. Well, that didn't happen. Then my goddaughter came along, she didn't want it. Well, I found myself moving so many times with that dollhouse, and I didn't use it, and I said, I need to get rid of it. So, after doing a little research, because by then I had started looking at all the shows on TV and realized if you have the original box, it might be worth something. I had the original box. So therefore, I sold the dollhouse, but it went to a really nice um, family. Then there was Noah's Ark. Now, I don't know how many people in here remember when you would go get gas and you actually would get something, like a little trinket. Well, my, mom, my dad actually bought Noah an ark. <laughs> And then every time he went to fill up, he would always bring an animal back. And it was just all of those memories that I was holding on to, and I didn't want to let go of either the dollhouse or the art, because neither one of them are here now. But I finally realized it was time for me to let go. And I just wanted to share that with you, because a lot of times we hold on to things, but then when you are ready to let go, then you let go. But now here are some just statistics on why we do have a lot of stuff in our homes and our lives. We have over 300,000, 300,000 items. That could be every pen, pencil, knife, fork, spoon, sock, shoe, earring. And that's a lot of accumulative stuff in our homes. But also, the average home size has gotten bigger. And what happens with that, a lot of times when you're in a home and it's full of stuff and it's full of clutter, you feel like that maybe I need a bigger place. And then what happens is you get all of that nice space and you've got all that room and then the next thing you know you see empty spaces and you fill it up again. So sometimes that is not maybe the solution. The solution is getting rid of the things that you have so you can have that space in your existing home. Also, 
one in 10 Americans rent some type of storage. And I can say I was one of those people because when I was in between my new home and the old home, I had a couple of months and I had to put my stuff in storage. But what happens is it's out of sight, out of mind. So you don't see it, you don't think about it until of course the bill comes. But what happens is in our storage, we have things that may no longer be useful. Someone shared with me that her husband, and they've been married for 12 years, had things from when he was single, the, 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 uh, the toothbrush holder, the soap dish, things like that. And I remember one time when I was helping somebody downsize a couple years ago, they had a dot matrix printer in storage. So sometimes those things are useless. And then of course, we have the garages. And sometimes we have the one car, we can't fit things in, we have the two car garages, because they become another place where you don't necessarily have to see everything. So that's another space that can be utilized. But the, the statistic that really stuck with me is that 3.1% of the children in the world are in America. But we have, our children have 40% of the toys. So not only are we accumulating a lot of things, but our children are as well. So, and just some things and reasons why we hold on, and these are just a few, there's the hoarding. And that is just basically you don't have enough. And sometimes it's not necessarily sometimes the things you see on TV. Sometimes it's things that trigger you from your past. I work with a client and every single place I would always see one roll of toilet paper and I just couldn't understand why. And then his wife shared with me when he was in the service, things were scarce. So when he came home, he vowed he was going to make sure that his family had enough. And the solution for that was basically just making sure that there was a place where he could always see how much his inventory was. And then another one is deferring and delaying a decision. I am going to open the mail tomorrow. I am going to read the magazine tomorrow. I went shopping, but you know what? Right now, I don't feel like taking all the things out the bag. And what happens is piles are developed when we defer and delay our decisions. So some simple things is when you have mail, maybe you don't feel like dealing with it when you come home, but just have a location so that when you do, you know where everything is. Maybe you don't feel like reading the newspaper, the magazine, but think about, is it time to even downsize? Knowing how much time you have to read and process this information. Maybe you don't have as much time as you used to. And then of course, one of the things I tell people is when you go shopping, and I know sometimes you go home, the next thing you know, maybe the dog needs to be walked, maybe the phone is ringing, maybe somebody wants your attention, so you drop the bags by the door, and then what happens is life goes on, and then somebody rings the doorbell, or you get that call, I'm around the corner, and you take everything and you shove it somewhere. And then the next thing you know, you're looking for the item, you say, I know I bought it, but where is it? and you do your spring cleaning and you find it. So basically, just get into the habit of taking it out of your bag and just putting it in the room or the area it needs to go. And then there's perfectionism. Perfectionism sometimes leads to procrastination because you feel like I want all the same color hangers. I want all the same kind of containers. I want everything to be pretty labeled, but really, it's organization is not about being neat, it's about being able to find things. So even if maybe all of your containers right now don't look the same, aren't the same color, but if everything, you can find all of your Christmas decorations, you can find all the kids' school supplies, you can find all the things in your pantry, that's what's key. And then the last thing is, sometimes we hold on to things because they're sentimental, like I shared. I just recently got rid of two of the toys that I had, and sometimes you think about all of those wonderful memories and the joys, and sometimes people have gone on and you want to hold on to it. But sometimes it's just really looking at things and seeing where you are now. It took me until I was 30 before I threw my prom dress out, but I got rid of it. 
but then sometimes you hold on to things for no specific reason whatsoever. And I'm gonna share something with you. Recently, when I was getting ready for my move, I decided it was time for me to deal with all of those personal letters and cards. And there were a lot. And I decided, one, I was not gonna even touch the cards, the letters that I had written my mother when I was in college. I couldn't emotionally deal with that. But I just started going through letters and I found one from my Aunt Ruth. And she had written this to me about six months before my mother passed away. And I said, okay, I know why I'm holding on to this. It's from her. She's no longer here. I need to hold on to this. It's something important in here. Until I read the letter. When I read the letter, I just almost laughed. And I'm going to read it to you. So I'm going to put this down for a minute. Just so you can read, just so you can understand some of the things that we may hold on to that really has no meaning. So this is the letter. Dear Jenny, just a note. Jimmy gave me the new information. I, I, we talked to Rose yesterday. I left a message at James, my brother. We'll call you later. I had been holding on to this to 2001. And then I was thinking this letter makes no sense to me whatsoever. So it's time to let go. But sometimes it's just maybe taking a step and just maybe going through one card and one letter and maybe looking at one piece of something. I recently got rid of my mother's jewelry box. I kept telling myself, oh, it's going to be a craft project. I'm going to decorate it really nice and put it on my dresser. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? It is time for it to go. So those are some things. So now I'm just going to kind of take you throughout the home and just kind of give you some simple things that maybe you can do to kind of control the clutter in your home. So the first area is the front door. And what I find is a lot of times we come home, we throw everything just everywhere. And one woman shared with me, she said, Janet, she said, I am frustrated with my husband. I want him to change because he drops everything at the front door and I'm tired of it. And I said, well, do you have a system for him? She said, no. I said, well, create a system. If he likes putting his hat by the front door, give him a hook. If he likes taking his shoes off by the front door, give him a rack. Sometimes you can get a nice decorative table, put a valet there, and just kind of drop your things. I have a friend, he comes through his garage, and basically what he does, he's got a system. He has a hook for his backpack. He has a charger for his cell phone. He's got a hook for his glasses. He even has, um, he has a place to put his wallet. So when he goes in the house, he can just relax for the rest of the evening, and then when he comes out in the morning, he doesn't have to worry about looking for things. So getting a hook for just putting things like our pocketbooks and our coats and our hats, so even just really creating that space and getting disciplined to put it in the closet and having a place for the shoes will help you. The next thing, oh, that's a little dark. Sorry about that. That's the living room. But basically what I wanted to share with you is we have all of those remote controls, all of those wires. We need the batteries very convenient, especially when you have young teenage boys in the house because they will take the battery out of the remote and then you're sitting there in front of the TV wondering why it's not working and it's because it doesn't have a battery. But basically the dark picture what I wanted to show you is sometimes it's taking something beautiful and decorative and just creating a storage for it. Putting your batteries in there, putting all those accessories. I mean, yes, I may be showing my age, but I still remember when, you know, first of all, a TV didn't have a remote, but then when we did get TVs, they only had one remote. But now you've got so many remotes and then you're trying to figure out which remote does what. But sometimes it's nice just having a place for that. And then also the other thing is a lot of times you have books and it's just thinking of creative ways to put your books. Maybe instead of a bookcase, because I don't have a um, table, a, a what a coffee table, and that's a personal choice. And I think it's because as a child, my duties on Saturday were always to go around and dust all the trinkets. So the less stuff I have in the home to dust now, the better. But it's just finding other creative ways to do things. Instead of maybe having a, a book on a table, getting a stand for it as well. Did I go a little further? Oh, that's all right. Sometimes my hands move a little faster. So this is the kitchen. And actually, 
I love that piece. I don't know how, that piece is probably 10 years old, but it makes it easy for me to get my plates. And I like that. I don't have to move plates up and down. I can grab a plate, I can grab a bowl, I can grab a small plate. And then of course, this I have a canister with all of my utensils in because that works for me. Sometimes it may work for you to have them hanging, but I like to be Chef Janet when I'm in front of this, this, the, the stove and I'm cooking and I can just grab my utensils. But with the kitchen, what I find is sometimes we have a lot of dishes, some of which we don't use maybe once a year, which is fine, but sometimes we inherit things. Like when my mother passed, I inherited her dishes. And I'll never forget the tip my aunt gave me. She told me, Janet, look at each dish carefully. And I said, okay. And I'm glad I did because by doing that, I realized that set of four became a set of two. Because things were chipped, things were cracked. Also, um, someone was downsizing and she decided that she no longer wanted everyday dishes and special occasion dishes. She got rid of the everyday and now she just eats off her special occasion every single day. So sometimes it's just using creative things and creative ways to do that as well. This is the home office. And sometimes with pilers, we like to pile things. So this person actually, when you walk in the door, that six foot table hits you right here. And what I did was we opened the space and it was just basically putting some bookcases because she was a piler and she liked seeing things visible and she likes being able to put her hands on things. So it was a simple way of taking all of that stuff and just putting it in those beautiful decorative boxes so she could just pull out whatever she needed because she was a wife, she was a mother, she worked full time, but that was like her little hobby space which she enjoyed. And it was just making it so that she enjoyed coming in there, but also it had everything that she needed. And of course, with that project, we actually took everything out. And sometimes when you do a project like that, everything does not go back in. And sometimes you do have to get rid of things as well. Now this is the bathroom. Sometimes people have drawers and they have vanities and they have all these beautiful spaces, but sometimes people, all they have is just a space underneath the sink. So if you're one of those people out there just has a space underneath the sink, get baskets. Baskets have a basket for all your bath and body, basket for all your hair, basket for all your first aid, and just so that you can reach things. But sometimes People do not have, I don't have drawers. Actually, I don't have drawers or I have, don't even have a medicine cabinet. So it's just making sure you utilize the space you have with what you can. And this is, I need to put this in my hand over here. This is actually some different ways you can use storage. For example, that nice little container, you can put your toothbrush and your toothpaste. That's a nice little tray. You can corral things on top of your vanity. Now up here, which you may not be able to see, is actually a black giraffe head, where she decided to use it as a hook. And what a lot of people now are doing is they're buying those cute little animals, they're cutting them in half, they're mounting them on the wall, and they're using them as hooks. So that's another way to use things and make things more accessible for you. I need to put this down. <laughs> um, this is the bedroom. Now, with the bedroom, there's a lot of space sometimes is not utilized. And underneath the bed, if you have, use it for seasonal storage, use it to put extra shoes, etc. But also sometimes use dual purpose furniture as well. Um, use a, a bench in order to not only sit on but store things. That's a trunk. You can store seasonal items as well. And I show the hook because in our bedrooms, a lot of times there may not be a lot of space, but I like to use the hooks one because it allows me to plan my outfits for the next day. But also sometimes when I come home, I just want to get relaxed and I want to get into my comfortable clothes. So it also allows me to um, get comfortable as well. 
question for you. So everybody has in their bedroom that one piece of furniture, like the chair or like the little bench, that all of a sudden magically has a five foot pile of clothes because you come home and you're changing and you quickly throw it and it's like your go-to drop area. Do you have any suggestions for that? How do you make it look less appealing of the place that you want to just clutter all the clothes because you don't want to hang it up right away? So if you have a piece of furniture like that nice chest in there, is there something that can prevent you from wanting to just throw clothes on it and get to them later? Well, I would suggest, first of all, I tell people, sometimes you have to deal with what's in the closet because I find that clothes get put all over the place because they, there's no room in the closet and what's in the closet they aren't really wearing because one of the things that I was gonna share in a few minutes was that we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time, the rest just hangs there. So if you get rid of the clothes in your closet you're not wearing, then you will kind of prevent yourself from throwing the clothes that you do wear on the floor because you will have a space in the closet for it as well. So, we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time, as I just said, the rest just hang there. What I wanted to show you is with the closet. One of the things that I would do at the beginning of every year is I would turn all my hangers the opposite direction, facing me. And then throughout the year as I wear things, I would put them in the direction I usually normally wear them. Because that way it would help tell me what I'm wearing, how often I'm wearing. Because Sometimes at the end of the season, at the end of the year, you realize that you aren't wearing the clothes that you think they are, and they're just hanging in there. So that is something that I do as well. So, I know I've kind of given you a lot of little strategies and things, but just how to get started is you want to find a specific, specific goal. What do you want to accomplish? Do you want that room to be the guest room? Do you want that space to be your craft space? Do you want to be able to park your car in the garage? Give yourself a deadline. Maybe by next fall of 20, fall 2018, you'll be able to park that car in the garage. Also, you want to break your project down into manageable tasks. You want to definitely get rid of stuff first. So that means just purging things before you go out and purchase a lot of different containers. And then have somebody hold you accountable. You have a lot of things in your homes and our lives, we all do, that we are emotionally attached to and sometimes you need someone that will tell you it is okay to throw things out. It's okay to get rid of it. You haven't worn that t-shirt since the eighth grade when he broke up with you, so it's time for you to let it go. And then have somebody just ask you some tough questions. Like how long have you, how long have you owned it? Have you worn it? Is it, is it usable? Can you wear it? Do you want to wear it? Do you want to be seen in it? So those are some of the things that you need to ask yourself. And then of course, how old is something? I know somebody, she has a book, Windows 95 book, and she still wants to hold on to it. Sometimes we hold on to our college notebooks, our college papers, our college textbooks. Depending on how long it's been since you've been out of college, you may want to get rid of it. And then of course, is it a duplicate? Is it a duplicate because you couldn't find the first and original, so you went out and bought another one, and you went out and bought another one, so now you've got three sets of steak knives when only you really need one set. And also just ask yourself, what is your current situation? Are you an empty nester? but you're still holding on to that box that your children sent home when they decided they came home to college, even though they're off married and have kids of their own? You know, what frustrates you? Is it coming in the front door and having everything piled? Is it going in the bedroom and having all your clothes all over the place? What are your storage needs? How much storage do you have? Do you really want to take things that you're not gonna use, that are no longer valuable to you, and pay storage, off-site storage. And then, what are your future plans? Are you deciding you retire? But yes, I'm retiring, but that room that seems to, I throw everything in, maybe I want to turn it into an office, or maybe I want to turn it into a craft room. So those are just some questions that you really need to and should ask yourself. 
So, some ways to get organ stay organized is you definitely want to eliminate the excess. 80% of the stuff we keep, we never reference again. And we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Develop systems for everything, for whether it's things in the kitchen, things in your office, things in the living room, things in the garage. Schedule time weekly to put things back. So yes, your mornings may be hectic, but at some point in the week, put those outfits that you decided not to wear back into the closet. Create a family retention schedule. So how long are you gonna actually keep receipts? You know, those receipts that maybe you paid cash for, you bought food, you, you stopped here, you stopped there and you paid cash, do you really need to keep those receipts? And when you buy something new, think about taking something that you no longer need, you no longer use, and donating it and giving it away. So some things that you can get rid of today, and these are just a few, old makeup, you know, dry fingernail polish, pens that don't write, coupons that have December 31st, 2017, manuals to equipment you no longer own, um, you know, maybe you decided because you wanted the dog to have a certain kind of dog food and all of a sudden he turned his nose up to it, he doesn't like it, well donate it to a shelter. So there's a lot of things in our homes and our lives that we could probably go through and get rid of when we go home. And of course, you know, recipes you never use. I used to collect recipes like crazy, but then I realized I had a binder of recipes and I wasn't using any of them. So it was time for me to get rid of them. So I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. Um, I will open the floor up for questions. Um, and this is my, I have a Facebook group which is, um, right now, I have them on a 365 challenge. I challenge them every single day to get rid of one thing. So please be sure to visit my website. And this is how you can reach me. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope. I'm known as Organizer Janet. And for those of you who want to reach me the old-fashioned way via phone, please feel free. So again, I thank you so much. Um, Let's give Janet a round of applause. Thank you so much. It was a great tip. And